so excited to get up here. I almost ran into the deacon. <laughs> um, three points. Faith, divinization, and death. But first, last week at 9 o'clock, Father Evans, our new pastor, gave a 2 minute and 53 second homily. My first point. Bring it on. I got the microphone. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. First point is an 11 minute, uh, 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 11 minute critique on his one 2.53 minute homily. How's that? Gonna keep laughing? Ah! No, uh, if he doubled the size of his homilies and I cut mine in half, mine would still be longer. <laughs> I'm the youngest of five boys. I will be heard and I love hearing myself talk. <laughs> Father Simon's one of six. Every once in a while when I'm in church and I see him preaching, I feel like calling a hostage negotiator. <laughs> People who are not laughing don't know Father Simon. Okay, so three points. Faith. Notice in the, in the Bible today, notice in our gospel lesson, how many times it refers to people moving towards Jesus. First he gathers, the apostles gathered with Jesus. People were coming and going in great numbers. Uh, people saw them leaving and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns. There were, he had pity for them, for there were so many. Where, where's that line? He, went, he saw the vast crowd. First and foremost, you know, if not, I will tell you, everybody wants to meet God. Everybody wants to believe in God. Father Evans told me a great story about last week's homily, preparation for last week's homily. There's a school in Israel where the Jews and the Arabs, they started in preschool, the Jews and the Arabs. And every year they built, built another classroom. They totally got along perfectly. Of course they did. They were kids. You've got to be taught racism. You've got to be taught not to believe in God. That's why fairy tales work with kids. That's why we tell kids about Santa. Why? Because their imagination goes, yeah, I get it. This, this big guy who weighs about 600 pounds gets, no, I get it, I get it. He gets down the chimney because the imagination is ready to believe stuff like that. It segues into what? Religious faith. We, 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 we enlighten the imagination. People, everyone is looking for God. St. Paul says in Romans 1.19, and I'm paraphrasing, God left visible footprints in creation to know that he exists. God left physical, visible signs. The sun going up, the sun going down. There's that awesome YouTube video. I gotta get it and find it. If you know it, please contact me. It's the, it's the video of how the earth actually moves around the sun. The galaxy, the whole galaxy we're in, the way it moves. I all, again, I never passed a science class in my life, so full, full disclosure. But when I saw this video, an actual video, and so scientists put this on a um, uh, computer model, all these planets, they're not just moving like together, they're doing this. And the universe is, you know, I've already gave this speech before. The universe is expanding. Gravity, gravity is pulling it down. Mathematically, the probability of a cosmic ooze or some accident is statistically impossible. Mathematically, it's statistically impossible for the way this moves. That's just one example. How about childbirth? How about love? How about generosity? How about forgiveness? So many ways that, that God shows himself into our life and pe lives, and people want this. As good, of a, as good as a person may be, I've met lots of people, some people, that do not believe in God. I don't think I've ever left an encounter with a person who didn't believe in God and felt that they were deeply, innerly satisfied. That's been my experience. We need God, and, and great news, God wants us. We need God, God wants us. It's a perfect marriage. What I gotta do is slow down enough, get away from my desires, my appetites, my, my uh, false sense of grabbing all I can while I can, piling up the trophies, piling up the uh, accolades, and be silent and honest enough. Stop managing my persona, you poor millennials. Seriously, what a horrible crutch to go through life with. And everyone seems to be on the same computer page. I gotta manage, wow. 
I, I feel very, I, I really do. My anger has turned to sour pretty quickly. What must it be like to wake up every morning and wondering how people on computer think about you? That's sad. And it's, it's a way of life. I, I, gotta, I gotta deal with it. Um, another example, and I don't know why I'm going here, and I don't mean to offend anybody, but it was at a wedding yesterday. I had a wedding yesterday where the bride and the groom had parents. Ready for this? I know you're sitting. I've been a priest 19 years plus. Both sets of parents went to church. What? You say, that's good. No, it's, big, it's a big deal. Both parents were married and went to church. You say, thank you for nodding. You're like, what's the big deal? It doesn't happen like that. The vast majority of the people I marry are living together, she's on the pill, and they don't go to church. Vast majority. And if I married your kid recently, I apologize. We'll, let's, let's not talk about it. The vast majority of marriages I have done in the Catholic Church, they're not going to Mass. She's on some form. He's guilty too. And church, I had a wedding recently. It doesn't matter when. Let's say it doesn't. I don't want to say recently. I had a wedding. Nice girl. She wasn't going to church. <laughs> it just was not. So you say, why do you get married in the church? Well, it's simple. Their parents, the photographs. It's not a bad place. Got to get married somewhere. And maybe in the back of their minds, if they're really calculating, they, they might think smart and go, you know what? One day I might need this. Yeah, okay, insurance policy. I don't care how people come to faith or come to believe in God. I just want them to get there. I want them to believe they are not God. There's a power outside of us that's greater, that is personal and loves us. And the fact that I know that he has a sense of humor is based on hippopotamuses and giraffes. Have you seen a walrus? And you're telling me God doesn't have a sense of humor. What's your point? You, who would make stuff like that? We have stuff in the, they, right? Thank you. I, I'm always impressed with the walrus. What does he do? I mean, just, does he do anything? I saw that movie with Adam Sandler, so is that a walrus? I think it was a walrus. I don't know. The point is, there's enough going on where we can smile and laugh. But if you're so tightly wound about managing your persona and going after your appetites and your cravings, you might not have time. You may have exited out that innate desire, appetite for things of the Lord, for being embraced by God. Doesn't it feel good? It really does, being in church. I had Mass last Mass. But because of the next point, every Mass is new for me. It really is. The gift of Holy Communion makes every Mass new. We encounter the Eternal. If the Eternal, if He who is Eternal is anything, He is new. He is present. He is, we all know the omnipotent, omniscient. He's got all those things, but He's present. He's present, and he's in our time. He comes to our time zone. So number two, um, so all these people are coming, not coming. What's, what's the effect of the apostles and Jesus trying to minister, teach the word, and cure the sick? What effect does that have on the apostles and Jesus? What can't they do? I think the, the kids said eat. The kid's right. Eat. They were not, that's what it said. It really does help to read this stuff. It really does. Sorry, I didn't mean it that way, but I did. Thank you. All right. It's a great crowd. <laughs> Don't, I, 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 you know, this is horrible. It's 2018. A priest shouldn't feel bad that he holds up the word of God and says to his Catholic congregation, you know, you people should read. <laughs> Where have we gone? It's, actually, she's, it's funny because you're like, no, <laughs> we're not. I'm like, don't you want to, hey, any sport, any, anything worth anything. I'm like, let me give a huge general, generalization. If you don't make it your own, it's not as valuable. Lessons in life that you've learned, that you got, are much more valuable. Oh, I know what I was going to say, and Ryan's here, I'll talk to Ryan. So one of the grooms, or, uh, one, one of the grooms said, um, there was a, a girl with a big tattoo and an earring in her nose, which is fine. If that's what you want to do, I'm not condemning anybody. And Marine, Ryan's a Marine. He's the last guy I'm going to tell, hey, get that USMC off your, off your arm. But someone said, it's done at times, this is my back to the first point, it's done at times for novelty, to be original. I want to express myself. Let me tell you something, my Catholic friends. In 2018, on this day, on this month, for you being in church, you're a novelty. <laughs> you're the one percenters. 
just by showing up. Nobody goes to church anymore. Not many. There's 1.2 billion Catholics. 900 million do not go to church. The person I just got done marrying a little while ago, she wasn't a nice girl. She was wonderful. I bet she has a great marriage. A good marriage. Maybe a, maybe a, maybe a great marriage. Could the marriage father have been better? Can it be better? On every state of every person's life will be improved by embracing Jesus Christ. By accepting God. Okay, so we got God. Now we move down to Jesus. Jesus and the apostles are busy talking about God, preaching the gospel, healing people. They can't eat. Why is it that all the Christians in the world believe in baptism, but only the Catholics believe what we truly do believe about the table of the Lord, about receiving Holy Communion? Now, let me give you a metaphor. There's a lot of Christians, and I'll just name a few. I don't want to name them because you might be visiting. The point is... We have communion. I say it's not the same. Oh, it's the same. It's, he is not the same. At Catholic Mass, the consecrated, duly authorized priest, in following the commands of Christ, under the influence of the Holy Spirit, turns bread into the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. And if you ever want to, if you ever want to uh, make your point clear to a non-Catholic Christian who says they have Holy Communion, just ask them where their tabernacle is. Ask them where their adoration chapel is. They do not have those features. Because those features, those examples, are only possible because we believe His presence lasts independently of a person's particular faith. It's an objective truth. When Jesus says, this is my body, we believe the bread became God in a sacramental way. That his cross, where he died upon, is made present. In your sufferings, God draws closer. God embraces you. In, 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 in your lost loved ones, and people you've loved and lost, God's resurrection embraces you. It inflames, we pray, a hope that does not disappoint, that our loved, loved ones are alive. It's kind of sad when you see people walking the earth after 5, 10, 15, 20 years, they lost a loved one. It's sad. The loved one in heaven doesn't want you sad. Grief has to come to some kind of end. And the joy of the resurrection has to take its place. So Holy Communion is not just another teaching alongside other teachings. It's like calculus. What's higher, trigger calc? Calc, thank you. You're the only smart guy in this whole church. I don't feel bad anymore. Calc is higher than trig. I never passed, passed algebra, okay? I never passed algebra. When I see letters and numbers together, I start shaking. I like them separated, okay? I'm not bragging, I'm ashamed. I can't do trig, I can't do calc. How do you get rockets to the moon? How do airplanes get off the ground? I suspect highfalutin math and physics and nuclear physics and astrophysics. What's your point? There's degradations, there's a hierarchy. There's a hierarchy to truth. This is the big one. How much so? If you know calc or trig, it's my say, those are the shorthand terms for the words. If you know calc and trig, hand me a scalpel while I, no, you can do basic math. I, you said, what's so obvious? If you believe that the priest can turn bread into the true presence of God, you'll get the holy water thing. You'll get the crucifix thing. You'll get the sign of the cross thing. You'll get the, I got the rosary in my pocket thing. All those things will be easy to explain if you accept this teaching that I came that they may have life, not just any kind of life, not just any kind of marriage, not just any kind of priesthood, not just any kind of singer, but the best kind of singer. She's a good singer. The best kind of priest, the best kind of marriage. That's what you want, that's what I want, that's what he wants. God wants our success. Isn't it great having a God that wants us to be successful? And I don't mean this way. I don't mean that this way. That's irrelevant. The relevancy of money is are you attached or are you not attached? 
Be detached. Which, so Holy Communion leads to that deepest understanding of God, communion with God. It ushers in the new and everlasting covenant. Notice when the priest, well, I, I don't know about other priests. I became a priest for one reason. I love God and he called me to be a priest. One, not to go to other priest masses. Did you get that? Thank you. That's one reason I became a priest. So I don't know what other priests do. I, I really don't. But if you notice at the end, blessed are those called. I try to pause. I'm the fastest talker I know. And it's, 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 it's a problem. Medication's not working. Um, it, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Watch this move. Last thing the priest says, besides body of Christ, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. They're doing all this good ministry, but they can't eat. God says, I want to feed you. I got a meal set up for you. Hey, will you get a dinner invitation? I had dinner with my senior on Thursday. I'm bragging. He came to town for his dentist. We have a very generous dentist. So he drove all the way to see her because she fixes his teeth for nothing. We got a good deal. Don't tell everybody, okay? I won't tell you her name. No, 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 I'm not going to tell you. But anyway, we had dinner. It was nice to be invited to dinner with my senior. How's retirement going, my senior? How are you doing? How's life treating you? We had a nice conversation. This is a spiritual dinner. This is a dinner of great consequence. You don't want to miss this dinner. If you invite me to dinner and I miss, oh, I did that to a nice family in a parish. It happened, it's not on the calendar. I got the call late. I, I blew off dinner, I forgot, totally. I apologize, I said I was sorry. In the back of my mind, I wonder if they still ever forget me. Because <laughs> blowing off a dinner invitation is kind of serious. You gotta buy the food, you gotta prepare, you gotta set time aside, there's a lot of details. For those who don't want to come to Mass every Sunday, there's, sorry, I'm going to slow down. There's, sorry, there's kind of a few background details that lead up to this Mass. God the Son's got to come from eternity. After a couple thousand years of Jews waiting, he's got to inhabit the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. He's going to be born. He's going to live 30 years quietly and humbly and silently. He's going to have less than three years of public ministry. They're going to nail him and kill him, die, kill him on a cross. And right before, the last time he's with us, he gathered, the last gathering he has, before the, before the Garden of Gethsemane, the last time he gathers, and this is so profound to me. I wish it was as, if it is as, a, as profound to you, you let me know after Mass. This is profound to me as someone who buried a father and buried a brother. If I knew that later today I was going to die, if I knew for sure, if an angel told me, if the bishop told me, I was kidding, but if, if I knew I was going to die 17 hours from right now, and, I, and you were my best friends, and you, you kind of are, just by the fact that you're in Mass, we're in the same tribe, that's not a pejorative, but we're, we're thinking the same things, we, we love the same God. We're loved by him in, 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 a, in a magnitude and multitude of ways. I would suspect my words to you would carry extra special significance. You'd put an asterisk, or you'd put a star, or you'd put a cross. That's exactly what happened to Jesus. Knowing all things would be consummated, he took bread into his hands, he looked up to heaven, he thanked the Father, and he looked at his best of friends, and he said, gentlemen, I'm paraphrasing, fishermen, guys I just met, I, I've been hanging around with for three years. I want you to perpetuate this living, eternal sacrifice until I come back. It's a way to keep the light on, the sanctuary lamp, the candles in the Adoration Chapel. The whole Eucharist is our way as Christians to keep the light on, to keep the fire burning, to get you animated. To get him living in you and me carving out more vanity, more negativity, more poor me, more selfishness. And that is the deepest gift of our faith. That's divinization. St. Paul says, it's not I who live, it's God who lives in me. And that's the goal of the Christian life. Third point is death. Totally new subject, what's the difference? Third point, it's my, it's my, I got the mic, so be careful. I got a call Friday, somebody's dying. In all my years as a priest, looking forward to a 20-year anniversary in about 10 months, because that just sounds nice. Eh, I've been a priest 20 years. Okay. Anyway, 19 in a couple months. I've never met somebody who's ever come out of hospice. I believe in miracles. I also believe in science. I've never met anybody. A woman challenged me a couple years ago. Father, that's not true. I know somebody who came out of hospice care. 
How long did they live? They lived another two months. When the doctor, this is my experience, and there's miracles. When the doctors tell you your mom's gonna die because she has some debilitating illness that they can track and they can, your mother is going to die. They're very good at it. They get it within weeks. Sometimes if it's a real critical illness, they get it within days. They can determine the time of your death. As a priest, Donna, which I should even tell you this, how long you think, Father? I've been doing this for a while. The person in question is probably dead right now. So I walk over to the house. Excuse me, I drove over to the house. Uh, two people, two women sitting here. The man is next to his wife and her, her body's in the living room. She's barely alive, emaci emaciated because of cancer. First words out of his mouth, because a priest walked into their house. He says, I have a confession to make. These two women, and this is, I'm just shooting straight. These are impressions, these are not judgments. They looked a little uncomfortable by me being there. When he said he had a confession, it's not what you think it is anyway, but that's what he said. They're like, we're gonna go outside and have a smoke. In the back of my mind, I don't wanna say this out loud, I'm thinking good. I didn't feel welcome. They give me dirty looks. Maybe, maybe I'm overly sensitive. But I need to take care of something. The husband's present. That's all I need. So there's two hospice workers. Long story short. Here's my confession. What's your confession? My wife, who's dying, she's never been baptized. I said, thank you very much for telling me. That is extraordinarily and crucially important. Because right now, we're going to baptize her. So like any baptism, emergency deathbed baptisms are like a Father Evans homily. They go a lot faster. So he has to, for her who cannot speak, here's, here's one point before I go any further. For all the Christians that tell you you have to be an adult to be baptized, for all the Christians that tell you you have to make a conscious choice before you are baptized, what do we do with the terminally ill? What do we do with the mentally uh, challenged? What do we do with the woman in, in, in today's example who is unable to formulate thoughts and able to speak the words, Jesus Christ? I trust her husband. Her husband wants the best for her. He, uh, I say, do you renounce Satan? We go through the creed, yes I do. All his works, all his empty promises, I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? I do. Do you believe in his only son, our Lord Jesus? I do. We go through the creed, he says, I do. I bless the holy water, I baptize her. Then I anoint her. And then I looked at him, he's got tears in his eyes, and I said this, it is so great being a Catholic. You know why? Because when your wife dies, I don't have an issue, I don't have a concern, I don't even have a possible uh, 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 doubt. The church teaches, if you get baptized on your deathbed, and you're un unable to think or commit any sins, where do you think Pamela went? If she's still here, if she's gone, she went right to heaven. Praise God. Hallelujah. And amen.